To highlight this semester's study of gender and society, let us focus on this topic. Gender and hospitality industry. This industry's contribution to our economy has been significant. Last year it contributed 5.4% in 2020 and 12.7% in 2021 to our gross domestic product. And in this province, no doubt, its role in the vision for progress and development is important if not central to success. In this topic, the objectives include the following one. Understand the dynamic role of tourism industry and its sectors in the economy and society. 2. Examine marginalization of women and other gender issues in the context of tourism and hospitality industry using the gender lens. 3. Understand the vision of sustainable tourism in the context of gender and development. 4. Examine the roles of stakeholders in sustainable tourism. Make some recommendations pertaining thereto. Initially, I will show you a series of slides in relation to the outlined objectives. Be able to answer the following seven important clusters of questions. 1. What is tourism? What are its types? 2. What do the laws and government policies mandate regarding tourism in this country? 3. How do you examine this sector using the gender lens? 4. Who are the stakeholders in the industry and what are their roles and obligations? When dealing with stakeholders, how do we use the gender lens? 5. What are its positive impact of tourism and hospitality industry to society, and to women and girls in particular? 6. What are its negative economic, socio-cultural and environmental impact? Consider the whole society and women and girls in particular. 7. What is sustainable tourism according to the framework presented? How should be mainstreamed in the framework? Tourism is the temporary movement of people for leisure and recreation. Tourism and hospitality industry rely on allied industries such as the agriculture, transport, and the food industry. Based on our law, sustainable tourism is one of the important agenda of our country. The United Nations Environment Programme and UN World Tourism Organization define sustainable tourism as tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment, and the host communities. As I stated in my other lectures, United Nations organizations puts primacy on human rights in setting frameworks for sustainable development. The SDGs are cross-cutting goals for member countries in pushing for their sectoral agenda. The Philippines is riding on the framework pushed by the United Nations World Tourism Council and the World Travel and Tours Council as it pushes its five-pronged tourism agenda. To get our heads clear and focused on how to use gender to analyze, recall your past lessons wherein the following had been made clear. 
1. That gender equality is a necessary requirement in attaining sustainable development. 2. That among the 17 sustainable development goals which the United Nations envisions to achieve by 2030 is gender equality. 3. That the 17 SDGs are essentially linked to the UN human rights-based approach. 4. That human rights are cross-cutting and that therefore social issues based on them intersect. 5. Women are suffering a host of issues based on their gender that worsens as global economic condition worsens. 6. That women take the heavier toll of the effects of poverty and gender-based violence which is related to patriarchal norms and biases which are still reinforced in many society, including many areas of the Philippines. 7. Since women make up one half of the world population, their human rights issues must be brought to the fore. To do this among the many strategies that may be taken, individuals and governments must. 1. Use the gender lens to uncover and highlight the gender issues. And 2. Mainstream gender into laws, government programs and WASTIS system to ensure women empowerment and their full participation in the mainstream economy and political processes. Ok let us go ahead and dissect tourism industry and social issues relevant to it. What about gender lens? This is the perspective looks at the impact of gender on people's opportunities, social roles and interactions. Gender relations are, accordingly, defined as the specific mechanisms whereby different cultures determine the functions and responsibilities of each sex. We are essentially using the gender lens when we push to answer the questions I enumerated earlier. Basically, all aspects and processes must be examined to find the place of women in if possible every marginalized sector. The challenge now is that there is a dearth of information or very limited data on the number of women and girls participating in this sector, the extent of their participation, as well as their gender problems and issues. This is why in this topic we cannot examine the current and actual gender situation. The significance of this discussion to your intellectual and social development are 1. To teach you how to ask questions, how to probe and uncover the gender issues through the gender lens. Two, to gender raise your knowledge and skills on the steps a gender or methods in using perspective the gender lens. All stages and levels of three, policies, to enhance your commitment to gender projects. fair values it to prepare you in joining the industries gender or companies equality. which are now gradually required by international institutions and standards to comply to gender fair laws on setting their policies and practices. And in fact recently, the so-called gender fair investment framework has been adopted by the World Bank's member company, the International Finance Corporation. It is safe to say that gender equality frameworks and legal mandates will eventually govern all industries. You as products of the academe should be ready for it. Let us start with stakeholders. The Philippine Statistics Authority published the following data about the stakeholders in tourism in the Philippines. This slide presents the breakdown of the Philippine tourism sector in terms of the players in 2021. In this government data, the figures are not gender disaggregated. This presentation of data is basically gender blind and will not be useful for detailed gender analysis which we need to diagnose however, we know for fact that there are more and more women engaged in this sector than and based on this and on other things we have already known, for example, that transport sectors are dominated by men. But also that there are more women in the air transport industry, except that there are safely more male pilts than women and other information such as this, so we can make some limited inferences. As to the impact of tourism there are at least four types of discernible impact of tourism. 1. Economic. 2. Socio-cultural. 3. Political public works and services. And 4. Environmental impacts in applying gender lens. Let us take a look at economic impact. Consider the effect of tourism and hospitality industry, among others. 1. Job creation in this service-oriented industry. Jobs are labor-intensive. And this pandemic, it is particularly risky to the workers' health. 2. Creation of varied employment opportunities. Development of skills for the untrained, unschooled population. 3. Growth of enterprise. 
Even this pandemic we see the mushrooming of new business and of course they have replaced those that did not sucked because of the shrinking of the economy. 4. Revenue generation was at 12.7% 2021. 5. Promotion of robust foreign exchange is also cited as a good effect under normal circumstances as to some of its negative impact, they may include the following. 1. Leakages of tourism revenue. Big multinational corporations siphon the income back to their home country. The MNCs tend to abuse the abundance of workers and low labor cost. When locals patronize foreign-owned, the incomes leak out of the country. The natural and human resources of host countries are exploited but they get little returns. And the gender issue here is that there are more females exploited because there are more women and girls in this industry. 2. Inflation is another undesirable but in many cases inevitable effects of tourism development. The effect is higher cost of living and decreasing income value for local residents, even worse in case of the marginalized. Dot and take note that women homemakers are the ones directly hit over this effect because of society's expectation that they be in charge of managing the family's needs. They are the first ones to know and feel the pain when the prices of commodities increase. They are also more concerned than men about health, nutrition, education and just about every need of their children, and all these cost money. 3. Over-reliance on tourism revenue caused the industry to suffer more from fluctuations. Actually the grassroots and again, more of them women and girls, are the ones bearing the heaviest toll. How about in the political aspect and in the areas of public works and services and international relations of the government? Changes in the political policies and processes are mainly due to government's response to the needs of the tourists in line with its goal of encouraging growth and revenue generation targets. It may as well be said to be demand-driven direction. As a result, the following are expected from tourism growth. Improvement of laws. Laws needed to be revised to accommodate the various concerns of tourism such as law enforcement for visitors' safety. Improvement of public works and monitoring of compliance in putting up and maintenance of private infrastructures. Standards in the quality of infrastructures are based on consumer expectation. As a result, the government invests a lot in this. Improvement and enhancement of public and private services catering to tourists. Unity and camaraderie among nations is also a positive outcome. Building institutional mechanism for nations to promote their respective tourism goals, financial, legal, other mechanisms. As to positive socio-cultural impact of tourism, they may involve the following. Conservation and preservation and promotion of culture. Promotion of people's unity and camaraderie, volunteerism among tourists. Enhancement of national pride and identity. Negative impacts include disrespect of local and indigenous culture. Dilution and misrepresentation of local culture increase in the incidence of crimes. Prostitution and sex trafficking, and in regulated gambling. As to tourism's impact on the environment here are some positive ones. 1. Protection and conservation of the environment. 2. Raising environmental awareness. The negative effects include 1. Pollution. 2. Destruction of the natural habitat of wildlife. 3. Damages on the species of plant and animal life. All these impacts will have differential impact on the lives of men and women. Now, come up with your own analysis using the matrices on this slide. According to the United Nations World Tourism Organization if there is no gender equality and empowerment of women, there cannot be sustainable development. The work of gender in this sector focuses on the tourism-related SDGs, 8.9, 12, 12b, 14, 
and 14.7, that are envisioned to reduce social problems like poverty and the well-known negative impact of tourism, particularly in terms of environmental, social and political effects generated. Gender analysis aims to enhance the positive impact beyond job creation gives rise to empowerment of the marginalized also in the area of enterprise creation, health, commitment to environmental conservation and, generally increase political participation. Conclusion It appears that tourism planning has not included women or has had insufficient place for gender issues. Within the tourism industry, relatively few women have the educational qualifications or foreign language skills to compete for front of house positions in the hotel industry, as tour guides, or in travel agencies, and women are more likely to be employed housekeepers, waitresses, or similar low-level positions. Targeted educational programs could provide women with the necessary qualifications to climb the job ladder, which could progressively help to rectify the imbalance between work opportunities for men and women and eliminate gender gaps in tourism employment. Gender equality is possible through a truly sustainable tourism only if related issues and concerns are taken into account with the dynamics of government and civic society using HRBA towards the respect, fulfillment, and protection of the human rights of women, girls, and other marginalized sectors.